like it was really hard to convince them. Like when I turned, you know, pro and go to World's Strongest Man, like, like. My dad didn't say he was proud of me until, like, I qualified for World's Strongest Man. So you needed to be at that level? Pretty much. <laughs> wow. It's high expectations, man. Welcome to the Shaw Strength Podcast. I am your host, Brian Shaw, and today I am joined by Mr. Trey Mitchell III. And Trey, for anybody that does not know is a two-time Shaw Classic champion. So 2021, 2022, and uh, has just been climbing the ranks in the world of strongman. Trey, how you doing, man? I'm good, Brian. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Absolutely, absolutely. So we are out here training for World's Strongest Man. So how, how are you feeling, man? Let's kind of jump into that, and then we'll do some backstory. We've got, I've got a, I, I told you I have a list of questions for you, right? Are you ready? Like a four-page uh there. Yeah, I mean, it's there's no pages in front of me because I'm I memorize all my questions, but you know, it's yeah. it's one of those things where where I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get into a lot of uh, history, but oh, okay. but but uh, how how excited are are you to be out here training for World's Strongest Man? Oh, it's great being one of the cool kids to finally get to come out to train with you, Brian. You know, I asked you twice already. You know, last 2021 Shaw Classic I asked you, and he's like, yeah, you did, great. you did, and then yeah. that. Beerstone last year asked you and you said yeah definitely and just took a year <laughs> <laughs> you, i mean there's a waiting list man there's a waiting, there's a waiting list. list i'm behind uh bobby no 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 <laughs> i mean <laughs> you're kind of putting me on the spot i like it i like it man no you you are here i needed i needed to save you coming for for a big bigger moment right so it's more special yes yeah. right so you should feel special. So, That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> your yeah. last uh, World's Strongest Man, you're going for uh, your fifth title and, you know, get to bring, you brought me out to help push you. You you are here to push me indeed, man. Indeed. Yeah. It's, uh, this is kind of the final push to be fair. And, and um, you're honestly, you're hitting the nail on the head. Oh, thank you. Brad. Exactly, man. It's, it's uh, you know, one of those things where um, your, your climb up in the sport you're getting stronger and you, you've, you've really been pro progressing obviously and, and uh, having that, that progress um, is huge, man. You've been putting in a lot of hard work, you know, back home and, and uh, we'll get in, we'll get into, into more of that, but I'm, I'm excited to have you here, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of fun and a lot of, a uh, lot of hard work. Yeah. A lot of hard work coming, go, going into the training, you know, like a, you know, like I work out uh, five days a week, uh, do on my off days I do recovery so it's just a, a lot of stuff goes in behind the scenes that you don't see like on social media YouTube and all that stuff boy that's that's the truth that's the truth and you I mean you don't post a lot on there I no. mean I feel like you're are you strategic with what you post or is it more nah, I'd, I'm just gonna work in silence and let my performance do the talking it's a little bit of like you know keep it you know secret like not post everything and like uh you know let my work do do the talking you know like i know what you say a lot like you can pull up a video and show the judge that you know like oh i did this in training but it doesn't matter on on competition day and it's like also it's like if it doesn't impress me like it, to myself like i was like it's not going to impress the other people but like sure like the you know the normal people and the you know your friends and everything they you know, they support you and everything. But. Well, it's it's a little bit more of an old school mentality, man. And, and, you know, when I was first getting started, it was always that thought process. And what I wanted to do for me is just close the door, close the door, train, do everything in secret almost, yeah. and then show up to the contest. And then at the end of the day, that is the proving ground. Just like you said, you can have videos on your phone all day long of, of impressive things you've done in training, but that doesn't mean you get credit for it yeah. at the contest. Right. Yeah. So doing that, but it's, um, it's one of those things. It's a little bit different world. It's a little bit different world now, yeah. uh, because, because of social media, because of being able to share all of these different things. And then, you know, what do you share? Some guys are comfortable sharing a lot more yeah. and uh, some guys don't like to share a heck of a lot, you know? And I feel like you're maybe kind of in that in-between ground, like you said. I, I feel like I'm in between. Like I do yeah. have the video saved on my video, uh, my phone, you know, like 
I think two times when I've been here, like I've gotten stopped. Like, what are you doing here? What are y'all guys doing here? Like, uh, yeah. y'all, y'all wrestlers are this. Like, no, we're strong man. <laughs> like, what's that? You know, like, so I have to pull up like some uh, Atlas Stone video. We do this. <laughs> so you show people. You actually pull your phone up and show people. Yeah, try, try and explain what it is. Like, like strongman has come up in you know the world. It's more popular, more mainstream, but still people don't know what it is. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, it's what's strong man? What's our like? I get Iron Man a lot. It's like, <laughs> no, we don't do the you know three relays, we don't do a mile run, or, you know, two mile. Uh, I'll I tell you what, if you could finish that train, that would be very impressive. But I think a lot of people, like you said, it's just the wording, right? Mm -hmm. It's like they're thinking Iron Man as strong, yeah. probably, and they don't they don't maybe even realize what an Iron Man does, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's cool, man. You pull pull up videos. I I wish I could see somebody's face when you pull pull your phone out and say, "Here's what I do," right? Yeah. And they still probably have no clue how impressive it is. No, they don't realize. You know, oh, four hundred pounds. That's a lot, but like, you know, four hundred pound stone is like top tier for straw man. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, and your stone lifting ability is very good. So, thank you. Um, let's talk about growing up, Trey. I want to know. I want to know a little bit about you. When you when you were growing up, uh, what was what was that like? Were you into sports? Were you not into sports? What was your childhood like? And and uh, you know when did you get excited about competing in something? Uh, like uh, uh, growing up, like I've grew up on like a a farm, just a basically homestead where you just we just grow food, food and vegetables for ourselves. Like you know, before I was born, my we actually had an actual farm, you know, like they, my dad uh, raised cattle, hogs, and, you know, goats, all the animals. <laughs> like, That's awesome. Then he had to grow me. He had me and had to, you know. And then, then he, he had to get rid of all, all the animals. He got, got rid of all the animals to support me. <laughs> That's, hey, man, you you must have been a handful, handful yeah. as a kid. That's, yeah. That's, That's what the, my parents claim. <laughs> yeah. I, hey. <laughs> That's uh, well, the animals are a lot of work, but if you're that much work, you must have been a tough kid. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I tried baseball when I was really little. I did, was not good at baseball. Okay. Like like that lasted one season. It was like yeah. Like uh, after that, I did football, like pee wee football. With I really liked foot that, but I would have been like at the end of my uh, third grade uh, playing football. I would have been too big to play with my age group. Because they were, were they doing it based on weight? Yes. Is that okay? Okay. Yes. So uh, I would have had to play with sixth graders. I was so big at in third grade, it, going in fourth. That's awesome. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't awesome for my dad. My my dad's like, no, you're not playing football. So, so yeah. I didn't play football again until high school, my sophomore year. I joined. My, I had some friends join, uh, convinced me to join the football team again in like a. Second semester of my sophomore year in high school, like joined, you know, started working out. So that was the next next time that you got into it. Yeah, into sports. And okay. Everything. So yeah. no, other than that, just a little bit of dabbling in baseball and some football when you're a lot younger, middle yeah. school age. I did a like a when I was in middle school, I did start lifting weights and working out, like you know, just a get. Like uh, growing up, got bullied for being the fat kid. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. you're a big. The, the the funny part of that is 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 I remember my mom used to have to carry around my birth certificate to prove that I was I was the age that I was yeah. because nobody believed it because you were so much bigger than yes. you know the other yeah. kids. So I would enter enter something you know whether I did like a, like punt passing kick or like a like tri star basketball mm. little little things like that where you would compete with your age group. Right, and yeah. that that wasn't necessarily weight dependent. Yeah, but she would pull that out and have to prove, hey, I was You're, actually that, that age because yes. nobody, I was so much bigger than all the other kids. So, yeah. you you went down that path a little <laughs> bit too, man. Yeah, it was a you yeah. know weight division. You know, basically like try, we had to get you know health checkup before season just in weigh. You know, so we were playing with kids our same size, same size. Yeah. So you so you're saying going through middle school. You were getting teased a little bit because you were bigger. Yeah, you know the you know the quiet awkward kid. You know, like yeah. you know being fat. You know, like oh let's pick on the fat kid. So sure, I got you know in like yeah you know, I got a lot of fights and all that stuff. You know, and I got tired of you know getting beat up in the well fights. naturally yeah. yeah. So I got tired of that, so I started you know exercising, working out. You know, on my own, going running and you know my. So yard. that's that's what's inspired you to get into that. Yeah. 
That's yeah. crazy. Did you did you have anybody that that showed you the way or, no. or was it like, hey, I'm just sick of this. I'm going to go to the rec center or something and start. No, like I started, you know, just doing push ups, sit ups, uh, air squats in my bedroom. Okay, okay. <laughs> go, going running in the woods and behind my house. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. man. So you yeah. ju- just literally did it by yourself. Yes, did it by myself. You now, know? did you, when you started doing that, did it did it make you feel better? I mean, what did it make you feel like, or did you start to feel more powerful that it did it help alleviate some of the bullying and that type of stuff yeah like i started f- feeling a little bit more confident you know like okay you know so this like, would have been around when like sixth grade seventh grade somewhere in there yeah, uh yeah se- sixth seventh uh seventh grade i believe is like in middle school when i started so around know, what 12 12 years old yeah something like that okay 12 13 yeah. okay that's when i started working out on my own like before that like uh you know working on a farm like we had we didn't have many horses, but we had. We, I had one horse growing up, like a chicken and stuff. But like every summer, like we go, you know, get hay for my Absolutely. horse. Absolutely, you know. Absolutely, you know, fill up a, you know, the trailer with seventy five bales of hay, you know, in one go, you know. Yep. Like funny story, like my dad likes to say, like uh, when we, were, I was still in pee wee football, like. Like, uh, he's sitting on the sidelines with the other dads watching us, and, like, the one's like, man, your son is just so much strong, just throwing all the other kids around and everything. He's like, yeah, he works. At, you know, he works. He's like, I'm pretty sure your son, you know, what did he do after the game last week? Oh, he was so tired. He just uh, he went and slept on the couch right after the game. He's like, well, I had him go with his grandpa to go get 75 bells of hay right yep. after the football Working. game. Working. You know? So it's not – I mean, you were you were ma- <laughs> manual labor. I was man. the – yeah. yeah you, it's not like you weren't ever lifting anything before no. that. And, no, it was and, manual labor before, like, you know, pushing, you know, a push mower, you know, in you know, knee-high grass. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I Honestly, man, I understand that. And a lot of people don't understand that that hard work, yeah. right? Because for me, it was it was kind of the same thing. I, I would work on my uncle's farm. Mm-hmm. So you're throwing around hay bales. You're, you're doing all of that, that type of stuff. And you don't have a choice but to be strong, yeah. right? So it's like, hey, this, this bale of hay needs to be moved. You pick it up and move it. Yeah. You don't think about, well, how much does it weigh or can I do it or not do it? You just figure out how to do it. Yeah. And I think that there's some beauty in that because you develop really natural strength, functional natural yes. strength, right? It's just, this is what you do. This is who you are and what you have to get done. So your dad's like, hey, Trey, we need to get this done. Yeah. You're not questioning that. You're not saying, well, I don't know if I can do that. You just figure it out. Yeah, that right? basically is, you know. Yep. Just got to do do the work like that. Basically what he taught me is like, this is going to get done if you don't do it. That is yeah. that is a 100% true, man. And I'm sure that that work ethic for you has carried over into a lot of aspects of your life, right? And, and as you've got into more training. So when did you start with actual lifting weights? <sighs> I bought some uh, pair of thirty pound dumbbells from you know the sports store. Then I so that was your first pair, thirty pounds, thirty pound dumbbells. You know, just doing whatever I could think of. You know, bicep curls and you know shoulder presses. Like I, so just everything with that one pair of dumbbells. Yeah, that's awesome. That's what I had first. Then I had a a barbell set, just the little cheap ones with the one inch hole. uh, Yep, holes. Yeah, I bought that. Then I bought a, a. a bench. <laughs> okay. So, okay. so it kind of went in the so wrong. All way. of this just came home. Yes. I so bought, you're, you're doing yeah. all all your first lifting was done at home. Yes. That's yeah. great, man. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I'm imagining that you probably took to that pretty naturally. Yeah. It like liked, you liked it. it I was liked just, it. You know, I did it almost every you know every other day. You know, I didn't just lift the weights. You know, I'm in my sore. Like eh, just, I didn't know what I was doing. Just you know, lift the weights, do as many reps as ten. I would do. You know, make up like circuits. I would, uh, you know, bicep curls, bench press, and then tricep extensions with the dumbbells. You know, just go back and forth. Absolutely, <laughs> as that, much as I can. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, you're lifting. You get it back into playing some football. Did that? Did that work out better in high school, or did you not enjoy it there? Like, uh, I enjoyed it. Like the, you know, working out and you know, hey, making friends in the football team. You know, the, you know I enjoyed that. You know. I had, you know, some bad experiences with some terrible coaches, you know, like had a back injury, uh, on, you know, walking in my barn, like slipped on some mud, pinched, you know, yeah, I pinched uh, my back and the coaches, they didn't give a flying flip. Oh, you man. It's like, you know, the, they were the old school mentality is like, oh, just walk it off. And it's like, you know. Like, so so you were, you were for, basically forced to play with like being Injured. banged up. And, yeah, and, okay. injury. It's like. 
Uh, one game, like I tore my labrum in my left shoulder making a tackle. Oh and, man! Yeah, and and it was in the same game. I uh, I was making a tackle on and like someone kicked my shin and I uh, fractured my fibula in my shin. And like I'm you know hobbling off the field and like the trainer he just you know it's like oh it's just bruised and, like just keep playing. <laughs> Like, I couldn't sleep that night. It was so throbbing and everything. I'm imagining you then had to go and wear a cast or something. Nope. Yeah. Like, it was, it was just a hairline fracture, but like, yeah, but it, you know, it hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so like, oh, it's just a bruise. So don't, you know, like, don't do anything about it. Rub some dirt on it. Exactly. You know, like, quit quit being, you know, weak and, you know, a pussy. Sure. Can we cuss on this? If you want to, man. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I I try not to, but. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, no, it's, it's, um, I mean, that's, those situations, I think, um, obviously do happen, right? Where you, where you have to, or you're forced basically to play through this. And, you know, there's a, there's a certain level of, okay, yes, being tougher is good, mm-hmm. but if you have a broken bone or you torn something or whatever, yeah. then it's a little bit too far. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's they, kind of that walk in that fine line. Yeah. They didn't really care. Like, uh, yeah. in a, so you, you I'm, I'm guessing that didn't make it very fun for you. Yeah, having uh, uh, terrible coaches did not make it fun. Sure. But, like, you know, hanging out with the guys and, you know, yeah, like that, actually getting to work out, like properly work out and get learning. Yeah. You know, you know, that I enjoyed that. Well, that camaraderie, right? Yes. Like that's that's probably the best part or one of the best parts of team sports in general is is having those teammates and, you know, giving each other a hard time, you know. Kind of like we're doing this weekend, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. kind of the same thing. We're all it's razzing just, on each other. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You got to, you got to, you got to uh, have that accountability, you know, and uh, and have fun with it for sure. But so moving on from there, I'm guessing that the, you probably did. You finish playing football in high school, or yeah, was, I played uh, football my junior and senior year, and like after, like after the last game, I like just thought like I don't want to get fat and lazy like all the other guys, and like I just. Like, I grew up watching straw men on, you know, TV. And, you know, it's like, can I do that? You know, can I find a competition and get into that? Absolutely. And I I researched and found a competition in Houston, like an hour and a half from where I live. So this is right out of high school? I was, it was in high school. In high school, okay. okay. My first competition was January of the, you know, the first month of the second semester. Okay. I was... My first two competitions, I was still in high school. That's crazy, man. Like, so, <laughs> so you you wanted to get into it early. Yes. Real early. You know, wow. Like That's, like I said, like I didn't want to get fat and lazy and, you know, af- like all the other guys do, you know, when after football they stop working out and just you know, balloon up. That does happen. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. No, so, no, it's great, yeah. man. So you found that outlet. Yeah. Found that outlet. And, 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 and how did those go? I mean, the first contest. My first competition was at the Houston Metroflex uh, uh Gym, okay. Houston Metroflex, and I was in the team division. I you know, won the first competition. Like I had it. The hard part was convincing my parents to let me do it. Like really, yes. Like they're supportive of supportive of me now. They're really supportive. They tell everyone, you know, I do strongman, and he goes all over the world to do yeah. competitions. But like to convince them to let me do the first one was, you know, twisting arms. Yeah, know. is it just because they didn't know what it was? Uh, they didn't think I could do it. Like they really like, like they'll they'll deny it, but they actually told me like you you're not big enough, strong enough to do that. Your yeah. parents said that. Yeah. Wow, man, yeah. that's that's crazy. Yeah. So you you were you it's something you wanted to get into, and at the first they were like, oh, I don't know, Trey, I don't know if that's gonna work. Yeah. They you can't make money. You can't you know make a living at it. You know? Yeah. And yeah. Like trying to convince them to let me do it was the hardest part. You so know? you, but you were, you were dead set that you were going to do it. Yes. Yeah, I was dead set on it. Like, you know, when they told me that, like I, I worked out almost every day doing something, you know, trying to do the events that I found and like, yeah, I won, um, I won most of the events in the team division. Yeah. Yeah. So when did that, when did that change with your parents? Uh, like what, after, after how long, how long had you been competing or had six, six, some success? Like when it's kind of kind of hazy was that like uh, okay. after the first one like my mom like she would tell people like oh like I saw him do the first event and like like I didn't realize he was so strong and, like he could like that's not my son or like, <laughs> <laughs> like they they would say something like that but yeah. you know like it was really hard to convince them like 
when I turned, you know, pro and go to World's Strongest Man, like, like my dad didn't say he was proud of me until, like, I qualified for World's Strongest Man. He didn't. So you needed to be at that level. Pretty much. <laughs> wow. It's high expectations, man. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, you know, and, and I know your, your parents actually now travel to a lot of the contests. They, they've been most of my competitions. They haven't gone to most of the recent ones. Okay. Like, uh, just because it's so so long travels, but like up until like uh, you know all my amateur ones they've been to, you know uh, most of the pro competitions they've been to. Yeah, that's that's cool, man. It's 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 interesting to hear you say that they at the the first um, you know part of you go, going into strongman that they were kind of unsure and didn't know if you could do it or yeah. whatever. To, to so it's kind of been a full circle thing with them. Yes. To come back and and get that so. Once you uh, got out of high school, what was what was the strongman road like? I mean, how how did how did your your career progress uh, from that point? And and you know when did um, you know when did when did you kind of when did you know that that it was like, hey, I'm I'm this is something I can be good at, something I can do really well. Well, like uh, after my first competition, I kind of kind of just told myself like if I trained hard enough, like I believe I could make it to world's strongest man. That's what I told myself. So in, you're still in high school. The first comp, after my first competition, like, wow, yeah, like I can do this. You know, mm. I did my first competition. It was teen division. The second one, it was like, that was January. The second one was in May, right before I graduated. I like, I don't like, I was in the open division was training, going against, you know, guys that's been doing it for, you know, years and like, older guys and, like, and you're holding your own i'm holding my own got third you know and going up against uh, veterans you know, of, you know well that some, i mean like, i can i can understand that man you're getting into it and if you're at that level getting into it it's you know something that that, w that would absolutely reinforce uh that thought process yeah. because if you went in and and got completely annihilated yeah you know then it's a little bit different and and your thought process might have been a little bit different but yeah that's great so but, how did the path go after high school then? Like, it, like uh, after, like, uh, I started to be, like, I did uh, teen nationals that year, got second place there. And, you know, I, after that, I did my first uh, open division and won it and, like, qualified for uh, nationals the year after that. Uh, got a little bit higher than middle of the pack, I believe. I think there was, like, 50 or so, and I got, like, 20. And this is at nationals, yeah. Okay, uh, amateur nationals when it was Denison, Texas that year. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Just like uh, every year, like every competition, I just looked at what could progress me quicker and quicker. Like to what's the quickest pass to World Strongest Man, the pro league, and all the other competitions. Like Absolutely. I, you know, I would go in for like the platinum plus competitions that you know you get. First place, you get a pro card. I get like third or second. You know. Yep. Like, you know, like 2013, I did a competition Shreveport. I was going to like I uh, went up against you know like veterans and like got third place by like three points. You know, so you're right again, right like, in the mix. I'm right all, the like I was always in the mix, always slowly progressing, always getting stronger. Every competition, like like just slowly get better better yeah you know? which is i mean in all fairness that's the way you want to do it man mm -hmm. it, it's it's not necessarily come in and and you know work on the things you're great at it's trying to work on the weaknesses and trying to be more well-rounded and that's how that's how you you can create success yes. uh within the sport so when, when did you get your pro card then um my i got my pro card in 2017 at uh amateur nationals and uh i was in las vegas that year okay yeah Right after that, ran into uh, – went into OSG. Uh, that was the first year they had it and got first place there with uh, Kevin Ferris and Spencer Ribnick. Okay. And, yeah. And, like, that was a qualifier for a Giants Live competition. And So that's what got you into Giants Live then? Yes, yeah. Doing when, doing well there. So uh, for anybody that's listening that doesn't know, it's official – OSG is official strongman games, mm -hmm. and then Giants Live is is the qualification for World Strongest Man. Yeah. So that's where you you I'm guessing had your sights set on getting to a Giants Live mm -hmm. because that's your path into World Strongest Man. Yeah. yeah so like I got top three at uh, OSG, went to a Giants Live competition, but in between there, I did a competition where the qualifier was a invite to the Arnold uh, Australia. 
Okay. So, like, in between that, I went to – I won that competition, got the invite to Arnold Australia you know, later that year in March. You know, that was my first ever uh, international and pro competition. Was Arnold Australia. Yeah. What year was that? 2018. 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how did you do there? Uh, get fifth out of 11 people. Okay. So, right. I yeah. mean, still not bad, man. Yeah. I mean, you not know, bad. that – yeah, being my first uh, competition as a pro, I Absolutely. believe I believe I was right behind, you know, like uh, Demitar Savantinov, uh, J.F. Caron, uh, Martin Lises. So all those guys were there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. All, you know. Yeah. Perfect. All, so all the World Strongest, I was like right behind all the World Strongest Man competitors, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. Which is, again, I feel like with the, with the first pro, first international uh, contest, to be in the mix like that has to be also – confidence builder yeah. right like you're building confidence because because you are proving to yourself along the way that you can do it you're doing better you're keeping up you know I'm holding all my own with all exactly. the other guys yeah you know? yeah so that's 2018 so when when um from there did you did you get into because your first world strongest man was in 2019 19 right in uh Bradenton, Florida. Yep, and we were in the same group yeah going up against Brian in my first group yeah <laughs> well, yeah that uh that's a year is, has definitely be become very talked about our group. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Infamous. I would say for me. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So they, they, and this is world's strongest man. They have the stone off and this yeah. is just the way it goes. But, uh, yeah. well, you like, went in and, and, um, tell us about yeah. that. Well, yeah. Like, uh, leading up to the competition, I, you know, pulled my calf. So like, uh, four weeks and I wasn't, wasn't doing any moving events. So I believe I would have performed better on like those moving events. Okay. You know? Okay. Like I didn't, the, so going so in, what do we have? We had a farmers and yoke, right? Yeah. And farmers and yoke. Truck pull. pull. Truck pull. Yeah. We had a, we had, our group had dumbbell. Dumbbell. Uh, yeah. That, deadlift. Right. Everyone had deadlifts that yep. year. Yeah. You know, on a deficit of uh, car deadlift. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With the ATVs, right? Or, yeah. or what? Um, they were ATVs. Yeah. Yeah. And, so you had a little bit of adversity going in. I had a little adversity, you know, not not peaked, you know, not ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I was I was seven points behind Alexei Novikov in second place, you know. But this is the rules. Yeah, the this rules in rules. was, uh, you know, stone off. Yeah. Like, and, like, I, you know, I just happened to be a little stronger than him on stone off. The, the world famous, the best stone off everyone says. <laughs> like, we. Yeah. No, it was, um, you know, again. This is, you know, I don't, I know that you're trying to say whatever, but you played, you played by the rules, man. It's yeah. not, you did nothing wrong at all. No, right? we didn't. And we you didn't. earned it. Yeah, you earned it because that's the rules that were presented. Just like this year, there'll be a stone off again. Yeah. Right. So it, it very well, a situation like this could happen and mm -hmm. it's the same, it's the same thing. So yeah, don't please. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm bringing that up and I don't want you to. Um, you know, feel like, oh, I have to justify this or that. You don't have to justify anything. Yeah. You handled you handled your business, yeah. you know, and that's what you did. Yeah. When, uh, put in front of you and you you did better and that's all there is to it. So yeah. that's awesome, man. Thank so you, man. that was the first final, 2019. Yeah, made the finals 2019, yeah. my first year. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome, yeah. yeah. And how was that? What was that experience like? Uh, going in, it like we had the stone off the day before, and you know, we'll get doing four <laughs> four reps was four hundred pounds. Fourteen yep. reps, fourteen reps was four hundred pounds. Yes, like, yeah, it was a little sore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll that'll fatigue the posterior chain a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, so like I I was moving slow on a lot of events, you know, like did a did well on the squats, you know. I think I got five or six reps. So that was well, the, yeah. That was the middle yeah. of the pack on that. Yeah, but you know, like. Finished the stone run, you know, on the, you know, on the, in the finals. And yep. I have ended up in eighth place. I believe yeah. it was eighth. But I mean, again, this is the thing, man. Making the finals the first year is huge. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of guys are able to do that. And then, you know, to come in, it's, it's a new, it's a new experience, yeah. right? So like, like getting there, I mean, that had to be pretty satisfying for you yeah. to get to world's strongest man then make the final and now now you're in that group and i think that's really where you kind of put your name on the map so yeah. to speak like in in 2019 would you agree with that i would say so no one was a no one was thinking i was going to make it the finals because yes. i had you yeah. and novikov out novikov was the favorite he was having a good good year too. he was having a good year yeah because yeah. he had he had won um what did he want? He won a it, couple. It was an Arnold, Arnold qualifiers, right, or something like that. He did an Arnold uh, 
South Africa, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So he he was doing well. He was hot. Yeah. Coming so in and he was and, the big name and like yeah. I was a, a dark horse. You yeah. Know, you know, coming in, no one, no one expected me to make the finals and you know, th- you know, won it and you got eighth place and you know. Absolutely, man. So so after that, after that point in time, I feel like you've only really climbed it. Again, you've followed that progression of getting better. And going back to work and working hard and, and, you know, trying to, trying to address all your weaknesses, which is what you've been able to do. And now, um, you've progressed from there, which is huge, man. It's huge. I mean, and you're, I think you're still progressing. Uh, Would you agree with that? I think so too. Like I'm always improving on stuff, you know, like my, like, uh, I know grip is your your baby and like I used to, (laughs) (laughs) it's something I have fun with, man. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy grip too, but like, it's one of my weak points. Like, uh, like I believe his like I used to be really good at farmers walks, but I I had a wreck back in 2019, like a really bad wreck. Like I got whiplash, concussion, and like pinched nerve in my left arm. What what happened? What happened? How did that? Uh, happen? I was making a left hand turn. Guy runs the red light and like basically runs into me going 80 miles. Not uh, he was going like maybe 60 miles an hour. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So so he you. He just didn't stop. He didn't stop. Like, he, okay. like uh, the guy that uh, that actually stopped at the red light had a dash cam. <laughs> oh, man. And so he sent me the video, and, like, I slowed down. Like, he touched the brakes right before he hit me, the guy that hit me. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. So so what happened from the – I mean – Like, that was a week before. You said whiplash and yeah, – Concussion, you know. Man. Yeah. So and, just and trying to a, come back from that was that, a week before what before Giants Live North America in 2019 and you still competed yeah I still competed <laughs> man I got second in the deadlift you know, okay behind Mark Felix so yeah so I you know but still yeah, performed still yeah. performed and not to the you know peak obviously you know having you know a wreck a week before the competition no that's not what you want to do yeah yeah so yeah. did you have some damage you're saying you had some damage from I believe that. I had like some uh, uh, nerve damage in my left what what did you feel. Like, mm, like, I mean, did your fingers like tingle or like why they, they were that? weak and like I get, you know, I still get uh, tingling in my left hand, like uh, the, you know, the. Well, that the, could, I mean, nerves are crazy and I've, I've had my deal with nerves, believe me. So I, I understand that, but it, all of it could come from your neck. The yeah. nerves are nuts, man, but well, you'll always feel it at the end mm-hmm. of the chain. So if you have something that happened with your neck, you'll feel it at your hand. Yeah. You know, like I've had, uh, you know, some good, uh, you know some assessments, some good assessments from some chiropractors and like uh, they check like neck, shoulders, like no, it's not, it's not there. And then they go to like the elbow and like it's like uh, the elbow is usually where I get it from. Like especially the ulnar nerve. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. But you know, I do, like I do a lot of recovery, try and do my best to get it, but it's still like lately I've been dealing with a lot of tightness and like the forearms right here. Okay. Do my do my best, but I believe my grip is, is progressing. I told you yesterday we did the the blob medley. We half, did, we and, did, yes. And uh, I got I got I broke the the Thomas Inch dumbbell off the ground a couple of inches. Which, you said that was a personal best, right? Yeah, personal best, like okay. I, that went the, that's picked up. I picked it up the highest I have since I've had it. Uh, that's awesome, and <laughs> and the ones that I have are not easy. No. So they're they're really I mean, glossy. That, I think that you would have, you'd have a really good shot with one that had a a, a little bit more texture i'm going to say to the okay. handle that's not quite as slick yeah so that's that was good man that was good i i think you did well with it i think yeah. you did well with it so i mean it's, i went uh one uh one blob higher than what i uh predicted yes yeah. yeah it was a good prediction yeah thank you yeah yeah so the grip i mean here's the deal you're always going to have weaknesses if you want to call them that areas to work on and the the interesting part is as you get better what was maybe a strength if you bring up something else, then maybe that needs to be worked on. So the unique part with strongman is you can always work on something. Yes. Right. All, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what level you're always at. Always, something. Always, always. So, I mean, you bringing up the, your game with all these different areas is exactly what you have to do to be well-rounded. And I think, you know, going into, um, you know, what I, what I would say is, is the Shaw classic is really the indicator for you, man. I mean, really, because, you you have more events, mm-hmm. right? So it's an eight event contest with sixteen competitors, and if you have weaknesses there, you'll definitely lose points. Yeah. Which 
does happen, but you get to test everything. Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, for example, you, let's just say that the grip events tougher there, you can shine in all of these different areas and, and, and well, being well-rounded with those is going to make up the points. Yeah. Right. So that's, and that, you maybe talk about that a little bit more, like how that's been and, and, um, you know, uh, where, where you feel like you're getting to, um, with that contest, like winning the shot classic had to be a huge moment, you know, for you, I, I would imagine. Yeah. Right. You know, the, my first, uh, big win, you know, pro show and, you know, his, you know, highlight of my career so far, I believe, you know, absolutely. Like you said, yeah. it's a, you know, eight heavy events, like probably the heaviest competition now. You know, yes. It used to be yeah. the Arnold. Now, you know, the Shaw is probably heavier than that with, yep. with more events too. Yes. You know? What you can't, I mean, again, you can't hide from anything, <laughs> you know, you really can't. And that's, that's what I'm, I guess I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying by you winning that, yeah. it just solidifies so much about you and, and the level that you're at. You know, I guess that's what I'm trying to say oh, is yeah. you're, you're, um, you've done, you've done so well with it. So, you know, the more well-rounded you get and, and I mean, you're still young. How old are you now? I'm 29. See, 29, not even 30 yet, man. That's crazy. So you got, you've got a number of years still to improve and build up and, you know, reinforcing, uh, you know, the way that you're training and the way that, that you're lifting, you know, I feel like there's a lot of, um, uh, good with that, yeah. right? Because you, you watch different guys lift and sometimes they're a little bit more out of control. Yeah. Uh, right. And I think for longevity, the more that you can kind of have that base that you go off with, with training mm -hmm. where you're, you're, you know, dialing things in and you're, you're lifting, uh, with a purpose and, and not being, you know, I'm going to say riskier with, with your training. Out of control. Exactly. You'll, you'll just keep getting better. Right. So it's like this level's here. Then we'll go to here. Then we'll go to here. Then we'll go to here yes. and you'll keep, you'll just keep going up, which is great. So yeah, that's always the goal. Yeah. Know? And I think that's your game plan, man. Yeah, I believe so. You know, yeah. just build up that base you know over and over again to where the base is bigger like uh like before i had a co a strongman coach like uh like i just basically did the basics you know and just uh, build that up uh, and you know just uh, like one of the quotes i've always he heard and like believed was like the py a pyramid could only be as big as its base you know from uh, louis simmons i believe yep yes. yep you know you got to you got to have a uh a a big base to build a big building. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like uh, starting out, like, in, you know, working out on my own, like I, I knew if I didn't do my rear delts, my shoulders just hurt. If I didn't do my rear delts workouts, like my mm -hmm. shoulders just would hurt for a week, you know, like, and I try and work on, you know, friends that try and get in the straw man. Like I try and t teach them, you know, build up the little muscles yes. so you can build the big muscles. That's a good, that's a good way to put it, man. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. So by and large, you getting into strong, man, do you feel like it's brought you, brought you kind of out of your shell a little bit? Yeah, I believe so. Like uh, strongman's helped me with my confidence and, you know, I've been able to talk and meet with so many different people. Like before then I was like, you know, just on auto, auto pilot, not uh, just going with the flow with everything and, not, yeah not there really like, yeah so i mean if you're if somebody's listening to this that's let's just say they're a kid kind of in the position that you were in right mm -hmm. like where where maybe they're getting you know teased or bullied a little bit or whatever and they they maybe don't quite understand how to take that first step or, or how to start working out like i mean what adv what advice would you give to to somebody like that 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 you know, is, is going through it. And, you know, now that you, because I've seen you blossom just in the last couple of years, man. I mean, it's, you're very different from 2019 yeah. when I first, when I first competed with you at world's strongest man, cause you didn't say a word then really, you know, it was kind of like, yeah, hey, I was in the background just yeah, like yeah. watching everything. Yeah. You know? But I feel like you're, you're, you're kind of coming into your own, which is cool to see. But like, if you could give advice to, to that younger kid, what would you say? Just a, advice on just like helping them start yeah i mean they're getting bullied their their confidence isn't maybe as high and you know having you having you go through it right like you've you've gone through it and kind of come out the back end where now you're in a position where people are following you they they look up to you and they say trey man look at this hard work and what you've been able to do and um you know that that story i guess that that your path right like yeah. what would you say to a kid that's 
you know, maybe thinking about like, Hey, should I start working out? Should I, should I start getting into this? Like any advice you would give to them? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you can, if you want to start working out, just go to the gym. Like there'll be, you will find people that will help you and support you. Like my first competition, I didn't know what was going on, what was happening. I never touched a log and we had a log in the competition. Just some, just another one of the other team competitors came up and gave me advice out of nowhere. Just go and you'll be able to, there'll be there that people there that will love to help you. And like, I love to help people in the gym too, you know, give them advice and things. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great, man. I mean, it's take that first step, right? Yes. I mean, a lot of times that's the, the hardest step to take is that first step. And you're, you're kind of feeling like, well, I don't know enough or this is a world that I'm not experienced with or whatever, but, but you know, you get in and then you start, like you said, you get around people that will help you or Mm -hmm. you you kind of develop these relationships or um, gain more confidence. All of these things are positive benefits from, from it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, um, it's cool to see you go through it, man. It's been fun. Right. And I think that you're, you're still, blossoming in so many different ways and and your strength is going up but then your confidence is going to go up and you know even for you like i don't know that we could have even done this podcast a couple years ago <laughs> you know in all fairness yeah, right to be like, honestly yeah you know I, like strawman has helped me blossom to actually help me you know talk to people absolutely like, like, yeah like i used to you know my throat would just close up trying to talk to someone i wouldn't you know i never knew or anything just like no confidence. Yeah, and yeah. Strongman, you know, helped me working out and getting in strongman has helped my confidence just soar. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, it's it's gonna it's gonna continue, man. So what uh, what are your goals coming up? What are your what? Do you, I mean, what's I mean? I I yeah. think I can guess, but yeah, we got a you know we got World Strongest Man we talked about earlier coming up. I want a podium. My highest uh, placing is four was fourth in twenty twenty one. So I want to at least podium uh, obviously the goal every competition is to win it 100 percent, yeah. yeah like always progress every year you know uh, fourth in 2021 and then uh i got six i believe uh, last year like 2022 yeah, yeah 2022 so yep. that's got, the, got, got to reverse yeah. that got to go back up love it <laughs> i love it man i love it well you've been i know you've been putting in a lot of hard work and you know it's it's that hard work that'll separate you and you know the stage is set really i mean how do how do you feel about the events Going into world strongest the events are good, like uh, like they're pretty much the standard events. I'm like I don't think anybody likes the Conan's wheel. <laughs> <laughs> like that's like the one it's, event that can go away from strongman. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny about that event is it used to happen a heck of a lot more. I remember when that. I um yeah when I was, I guess you would have seen it more too probably when you were starting right. Uh, watching, uh, have you yeah, done like, have you done it a few times? Yeah. Uh, Team, uh, my first competition, I had a Conan's wheel. It was light stuff. They just, you know, basically a bunch of circles. Uh, let's see. I had a, like, uh, growing up in t- southeast Texas, like, I competed, competed at competitions Travis Ortmeyer put on. And okay. So, yeah, he he had a Conan, he had a yoke walk into a Conan's wheel. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> then, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I had I had that competition. You know, I think those were the... I might have had one other, but I okay. can't remember. So it's been it's been a while. Yeah, it's been but a long while since we've done Conan's. Yeah, Wheel. they they when I was first getting started, it was, it seemed like it was pretty regular. Yeah. It was like one of the regular events that that would happen a lot, a lot, and yeah. then it just kind of for whatever reason just kind of faded out mm-hmm. a touch. And it's weird how you see that with certain events in strongman. It's it's sometimes you see them all the time, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, that hasn't been around for yeah. a while. And so Conan Conan's is one of those. So. Yeah. Are you are you you're not looking forward to that? You're, no, it's you, just not one of my favorite. Not the it's favorite. Just like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. no. I, hey, man, I I, I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. But like all all the other events, I'm looking forward. They're good. Like get to do a Fingles Finger and you know Shaw uh, in the in the World Strongest Man will be cool. Yes. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Shield carry like uh I like shield carry like for like heavyweight for short distance got it <laughs> but we yep. gotta yeah uh, this is gonna be max you know really yeah and so it yeah. should should be heavy from what they've said well, from what they told it's gonna be really heavy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's yeah I'm, I'm with you on the heavier weights man yeah. I, i'm also a fan of that so yeah. that's good I'm, I'm looking forward to it trey I'm, I'm i think you're gonna perform really well man and we've got we've got some work to put in uh mm-hmm. here in training which is you know it's the point of it and you know when you have um 
when you have competitors that are high level getting together, you know, it, it's, uh, I really believe iron sharpens iron, right? So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, um, you coming in, I'm going to push you, you're going to push me. And that's part of, that's part of the game, right? Yeah. So like, this that's is, dope. it's going to be good. It's going to be a lot of good, yeah. man. So, um, cool. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah. It's been fun, Thanks. fun talking to you. And, and, uh, it's, it's been neat to see your progression and, uh, you know, I know that you're going to keep going forward and keep doing big things, man. So, yeah. Thank um, you. where, where can people follow you if they want to check you out? Uh, uh, I got my Instagram berserker lifter berserker lifter. Yeah. On okay. Instagram. Perfect. And then, uh, Trey, Mitch, Trey, big thicket Mitchell on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. I barely upload anything on there. I don't have a James. Like no, you you're good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to get it started. <laughs> yeah. But, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah. I have those two. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, if you are not following Trey, give Trey a follow and, uh, yeah, he, he puts out some some videos and they're fun to watch, man. The, the oh. Instagram stuff clips you put up and Thank I'm you. sure you'll be putting up more, um, in the future here. So yeah, yeah it's going well, but, uh, anyway, appreciate you guys. If you enjoyed this, if you got something out of it, please share the podcast. It's the best way to help us out and to, uh, to spread the message, man, and, and get, get it out to more people. So definitely appreciate that. And, uh, hope you're all doing amazing for now. Go out and be great. And we'll check you guys later.